And next in line is a panel discussion on how climate change awareness can be multiplied through collaboration between green and culture professionals. Angeliki Kosmopoulou, Executive Director at the AC Lascaridis Charitable Foundation, will lead a discussion among professionals in the field. Alexis Galinos, Executive Director of the Board of Trustees of Organization Earth. Nicola Zuros, Director of the Natural History Museum of the Lesbos Petrified Forest. And Nikos Hadzigiorgiou, Managing Partner at C2H Partners, Gliadis Internet of Things Innovation Cluster and Green Museum. The title of the panel discussion, Joining Forces environmental organizations and museums and cultural organizations. Angeliki, the mic is all yours and thank you very much for coming. Well, good afternoon, everyone. The health uh, of our planet is definitely one of the most defining issues of our times. And we know that no one should be left out of the efforts to tackle the climate crisis and seek viable solutions for the future. As cultural creators and history makers, museums and cultural institutions have their own distinct part to play in such efforts, raising awareness on environmental issues and contributing to the discourse on sustainability and climate change through exhibitions, installations, workshops, publications, and lectures, among other things, is an obvious starting point for museums, cultural institutions, and environmental organizations alike. In addition to that, Museums and cultural institutions can become more sustainable per se, we heard interesting things about that already, and embrace practices that reduce waste, uh, move us towards net zero, and set a new sustainability paradigm. Infrastructure, operations, energy usage, and waste management are some of the factors that affect the environmental impact of museums. Now, the good news is that museums across the globe are increasingly seeking ways to improve their environmental profile and are more and more eager to drive change. The bad news is that we still have a long way to go in order to undo, unlearn, and relearn if we really want to see things change sometime in the near future. In this panel, as Sophia already said, we seek to discuss sustainability, with the representatives of three institutions with different profiles, yet with the shared interest in both the environment and culture. Thus, we shall discuss their strategies, challenges, victories, shortcomings, and lessons learned, hoping to learn from their examples and to be inspired by them. We want to hear what they're doing, what has worked for them, and what is to follow. So I have the pleasure to welcome Mr. Alexis Galinos, the Executive Director of the Board at Organization Earth and Vice President of the Athens Epidaurus Festival, Mr. Nikos Hadzigiorgiou, Managing Partner of C2H Environmental Engineering and Partner of Pliades IoT Cluster in Green Museum, and Dr. Nicolo Zuros, Director of the Natural History Museum of the Lesbos Petrified Forest. And I would like to start with Mr. Zuros. Uh, as a representative of a museum on the panel. So Mr. Zuros, how does the Natural History Museum at Lesbos tell the story of climate change and how does it embrace sustainability? What do you do on the sustainability front, in other words? So good, good evening, good afternoon to everybody. It's a great pleasure to participate in this conference and to have the opportunity share with you uh, some of uh, our experience at the Natural History Museum of the Lesbos Petrified Forest. A small public museum and research organization which lies at the border of the European Union and does not want to remain a marginal organization without any impact to the local community, but with an ambition to contribute in global uh, issues, global environmental issues, and the protection of geological heritage of our planet. That's why our museum was involved to the movement and creation of the Global Geoparks Network, an initiative of UNESCO, which uses heritage as a tool for sustainable local development. And at the same time, we are contributing to the fight against the current threat against climate change through a variety of activities like awareness uh, raising and events, 
like exhibitions, thematic exhibitions on climate uh, change, which is close to our main uh, subject, but also trying to help uh, to introduce and integrate the climate change aspect in the permanent museum's exhibition. Further to that, we do a lot of educational programs focusing on climate change. And last but not least, we try to help to change our infrastructure by greening the museum uh, facilities. And this is a big project to become a green museum, which is just completed, just this week completed, uh, a museum with almost zero carbon emissions. During the last years, the Natural History Museum had a significant change to its uh, infrastructure with the help of the uh, European uh, Union uh, financing. And uh, we try to uh, change uh, our infrastructure with an installation of an autonomous photovoltaic system and with special interventions aiming to create an energy efficient museum with the replacement of uh, old uh, style uh, uh, air conditioning, lighting, all this, and having uh, a, a, a really green museum uh, operating and giving also uh, the basis for uh, new educational programs that try to show that we are not only talking about climate change and try to raise awareness on this big threat, but we also do whatever is possible in order to, with our actions, with our um, activities to show that climate change is not something far away, but is something that uh, we need to do every day, what is possible uh, to overpass. We do a lot of awareness uh, raising uh, activities for the local society, for our uh, visitors, uh, trying to uh, familiarize the public, uh, first of all, with the richness of biodiversity, flora and fauna of Lesbos Island, and how the climate change can affect this treasure, this um, important uh, element that makes our a place, our island, a place to live, a, a place to enjoy nature. And uh, we give a special emphasis to uh, activities for families and children through lectures, workshops, online seminars for the, uh, uh, for the uh, teachers of schools. We do a lot of educational programs based on uh, our exhibition trying to show how the past climate change, the history of our planet, uh, teach us the about the consequences of the current climate change. You know, it's very difficult for the public uh, to, to understand the real consequences of the climate change, but we can show that the uh, current uh, biodiversity of the, of the island have roots to the uh, past ecosystems, to the fossils that uh, are the main uh, issue for uh, our museums. And we can see that not all of them survived to the past climate changes. This is also the theme of uh, thematic exhibitions that travels in uh, Greece, but also abroad nowadays is in Germany, uh, understanding climate change, exploring the consequences of the, uh, of the uh, uh, current uh, threat through the geological record. Uh, and of course, the basement for that is our fossils of the Lesbos Petrified Forest nowadays is in Frankfurt. And due to the great uh, success of this exhibition in collaboration with the visitor center of Messel Pit World Heritage uh, Site, we have an extension of the exhibition till uh, next uh, May. And this exhibition is also uh, uh, organized with the support of European uh, Union Projects Horizon that supports us with the staff. Because I said we are a public, a small public museum, uh, and we need more staff, more researchers to contribute in our activities. We were very pleased that this 
activities of uh, our museum that, as I said, tries not to be a marginal organization, but contributes to the global discussion on climate change, have been presented in the COP26 in Glasgow last month, and uh, were also presented as a, a, a good practice to follow by UNESCO in the frame of this global uh, meeting. So this is what we are doing. Uh, I hope I try to cover all the different aspects. Uh, we have a strategic plan and we work on that strategic plan and we try to implement because climate change is in front of us and is an issue for us, for our society, but also for the generations to come. And we have an, uh, um, a duty uh, to try to, to, to explain this issue to the broad public and make them aware of what is coming unless we act now. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Zuros. Um, there are many things that I noted down uh, following your presentation. Uh, it's interesting to see how a museum, uh, like a, a local, a regional museum, can have such impact, uh, not only on the national front, but on the, Europe on the European front as well. And it's interesting to think to see that there are different things that you're doing on the sustainability front, like starting from the content of your exhibitions, uh, moving on to the greening, as you said, of your infrastructures, and then also the practice, including the practices that you follow, which brings us to this leading by example that we all talk about. And this is what gives uh, a real, you know, depth to the notion of sustainability. I'm, I, I think that. For most of us, it is unfortunately clear that we, although we use terms like climate crisis and sustainability, not everyone understands what they mean, what they actually mean, if we want to go beyond terms, and not everyone understands the same terms under the different light. So talking to the public about that is always necessary, and it's never enough. But we will get back to that in a little while. So Mr. Galinos, Organization Earth is an environmental organization but it is increasingly, as we discussed, using art in, as a means to explain the climate crisis and encourage a sustainable future. What are you doing these days to include more culture in your programs? Uh, hello, good evening. Um, so we are, uh, we, were, uh, we are not yet uh, including uh, art and culture into our programs. It's just that uh, from our perspective, uh, culture is an integral part of the urban agenda and the urban agenda is where the fight is in, you know, uh, in fighting uh, climate, uh, cr the climate crisis. Uh, so uh, with that, having that in mind, uh, we've been discussing with the board of directors that we need to mobilize the culture sector and align with them, uh, uh, join forces, if you will. And uh, what we thought that we should do is to get in touch with um, uh, actors and theater writers to put together plays uh, for children uh, around themes that revolve around uh, uh, cities, biodiversities in cities and coexistence, or themes like... Um, green and safe mobility in our neighborhood or uh, animal kingdom stories uh, uh, in cities or um, neighborhood trees uh, as uh, natural cooling systems and so on and so forth. So, you know, we, we understand for us, it's self-evident, it's obvious that culture is a very important um, sector and uh, player in, in fighting uh, climate crisis because, you know, culture uh, speaks more to our hearts rather than to our minds and because it has this inspirational force uh, behind it, it could be a very important lever in, in, in changing, uh, in helping to transform our habits and our consumption patterns, which is a must uh, at this and day and age, uh, because it now is correctly uh, connected to our survival. So we have more to see and hear from you in the near future when it comes to art and theater. Thank you, Alexis. 
And uh, let me now turn to Mr. Hazigiorgiu. You represent a business, but a business that helps cultural organizations to become more sustainable. Uh, and it, in a way, directs their efforts. Actually, I know that you collaborate with the Benaki Museum on such a project. What is it that you do? And uh, what are the major challenges you face in trying to translate sustainability for the day-to-day -day, uh, operations of a cultural organization? Uh, hello from my side. Uh, I would like uh, to thank the organizers for the invitation. So, um, as you said, uh, we are a private company, but I'm also here representing um, the Pleiades IoT cluster. It is a large scale effort to develop an uh, Internet of Things ecosystem in Greece. But in more particular, uh, the vertical working group, which is named a Green Museum Project. So um, due to our company's background in uh, building sustainable design and sustainability certification schemes, we have joined this partnership as the uh, domain knowledge experts, while uh, our other partners share expertise in domains like uh, technology, Internet of Things, building automation, uh, gamification techniques. Of course, we have on board the Bernanke Museum, as you said, as the cultural uh, organization. So uh, let me share the scope of the project and you will immediately understand how related it is to, to the climate change issues. Uh, the Green Museum's scope is to promote sustainability in cultural infrastructure. How are we going to do this? By creating a platform that will enable the adaptation of green building principles and best practices, but to the particularities of existing cultural facilities. Uh, the platform will be based on well-established methodologies regarding sustainability, like BRIAM, LEED, and WELL certification standards. Uh, these standards adopt a holistic and human-centric approach towards sustainability and assess a building performance and management against uh, key aspects, like, for example, energy and water efficiency, indoor air quality, uh, health and well-being, resilience to risks, including those from climate change, like temperature rise or floods, uh, management practices, circular economy principles, pollution management, sustainable transport access, uh, movement to promote active living, uh, community engagement and support to local biodiversity. So uh, considering these aspects, our goal is to develop a digital tool that will help cultural organizations integrate sustainability principles into their operations and uh, policies. Uh, with the help of new technologies, of course, and other innovative paths, we aim to, to undertake a pilot implementation to the Benaki Museum, uh, hopefully to become an exemplary case study also for other uh, cultural organizations. Thank you. I'm noting holistic and human among other terms, because I think that both of them are very interesting in translating this concept and turning it into something that all of us can understand. Uh, I would like to go back to Mr. Zuros now and ask about the future of culture in sustainability. The discussion about uh, climate change is a discussion that entails the future and our thoughts and views and dreams and hopes and plans for the future. So what do you, what do you think and what do you hope uh, is the role that culture will play in the future regarding sustainability? Do we need more culture and what type of culture and what, uh, what facets of that? I think uh, uh, the question is how active can be the cultural organization in facing, in contributing to the uh, global issues such as climate change? How close to the society will be the cultural organizations. And I think that we have many things to do. Uh, really, the museums have a special role uh, in raising awareness, in promoting uh, their heritage, the past that, uh, or even uh, modern art uh, can contribute to that. 
to raise awareness for, for these uh, big issues. Of course, we all face difficulties. We are in a, during the pandemic that um, as cultural organizations, we, we had to transfer our activities from the real world to the digital world. And uh, with uh, the consequences to the, all the workers working in cultural uh, uh, industry worldwide, uh, this was not uh, so easy. The resources are very uh, few, and I mean, uh, we need more resources in order to play a, a better role towards that direction. But we have to do it. First of all, because climate change, of course, uh, uh, is an issue that affects not only our society, but also the main, uh, the main subject of the museums, our heritage. Our monuments are also uh, have the impact of the climate change. We have these extreme events that uh, we have to understand how the planet acts and why we have, due to climate change, all these extreme events that uh, so dramatically affect uh, our monuments. And um, it's, it's important to... Uh, integrate those issues in our activities through strategic plans for uh, to, to confront the, the climate change and raising awareness to, to the society. I think the, 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 the cultural organization and especially the museums have to um, take the leadership in uh, awareness raising. And this I think is, um, extremely important using culture, using art uh, as the best tool to make the people, you said before, we should not focus just on the, on the dramatic, uh, uh, the dramatic consequences, but we should also focus on the beauty. We need beauty and art and nature represents beauty. And we need to, to, to improve our, ourselves as uh, citizens working in uh, the society, together with the society. We cannot solve these problems isolated. Each one is it, in, our, uh, in, our, in our homes, in our, in our offices. And last but not least, we should understand that climate change, but also the current pandemic, is the result of the mismanagement of our planet, the mismanagement of our ecosystems. If we try to rethink through the rethinking of the operation of the museum, to rethink how we can deal with these issues, I think we will make a big step forward to uh, confront the consequences of climate change. Thank you. Mr. Galinos, I'll turn to you. Uh, you talked to us about future plans for organization Earth, uh, but going you know, one step further, I would say, to encompass all of your roles, what do you think is the role, the big role that culture should play in sustainability and climate and the tackling of uh, crime, climate change in the future? And what would be uh, an ideal scenario for you, if I may ask? Um, so, okay, the, the, the European, let's say, which we are part of uh, agenda says that we have to be, we're planning to be climate neutral by 2050. And our cities need to be climate neutral by then. There are already projects that are uh, city projects that are moving in that direction. Uh, this is, you know, an, an immensely uh, difficult endeavor that uh, that we have to undertake as societies and our leaders. Um, the key, uh, one of the key uh, elements of success of this of this uh, effort will be the participation uh, of citizens. Uh, this cannot happen. It cannot just be enforced by, let's say, investments, public investments, and laws and regulations. People behaviors 
have to change and we have to understand in order to change we have to um, you know voluntarily realize um, what uh, change means in our lifestyles and we have to get accustomed to this change you know because I think at this juncture most of us understand that we need to change I mean uh, I think to many people it is obvious it's just a question of how we do it and in that sense it's very, uh, we feel at the Organization Earth that it's very important uh, and it works, uh, the encouragement of participation through active learning. So through learning by doing. And I think that uh, if culture, which in some cases adopts this approach, uh, but if it adopts it in a greater scale and if culture is let's say, uh, mobilized to work with, the, uh, with, with, the, uh, with society in this respect, I think that we could have, um, you know, very important uh, success on, on, on these challenges. Um, so I think that culture is probably crucial, crucial in, in moving ahead, uh, but culture will have to have an active role and self-participate in all this. I mean, uh, cities, as again, uh, they have to move forward and they have to move forward with stakeholders. So I believe that cities, hand in hand with cultural institutions, can do a lot to take this societal agenda uh, forward. Thank you. Mr. Hazir, you, you have the hat of an environmental engineer on tonight. So do you think that we need more culture? to address sustainability challenges? Uh, for sure. Well, <laughs> I would say that uh, cultural organizations must be supported in, in embracing sustainability in their operations uh, and strategies and action plans. That, that, what, that is what we're trying to do also in this uh, Green Museum project, uh, because this can have uh, multiple benefits not only for them as organizations, but most importantly for, for the society. Uh, we can have environmental benefits by integrating measures to reduce the facilities impact, for example, CO2 emissions, etc. Uh, we can have social benefits by providing a healthier, more inclusive environment for both staff and visitors, raising awareness, as previously said uh, from the other two speakers, and we can also have economic benefits. We can have reduced operational costs. We can have uh, better management practices. We can have measures to protect the buildings against future impacts from climate change. So I believe setting goals and action plans with a sustainability perspective is, uh, is very crucial. It can help uh, cultural organizations to, to play an exemplary role in raising awareness in the wider society. Uh, of course, it is also crucial if such actions have appropriate support from uh, the legislative framework, first of all, but uh, also from financial support uh, instruments uh, in order to facilitate the implementation of, of such measures. And uh, actually, we were happy to hear only a few days ago that uh, a national action plan for the protection and adaptation of cultural spaces uh, to climate change is under preparation by, by the relevant authorities in line with the uh, EU targets. So we'll have to wait and see and hope it will include actions uh, in this direction. Thank you. Um, as Ms. Hambaka mentioned in her introduction to our panel, collaboration is um, also one of the uh, things that are really important when it comes to culture and sustainability. And I would like to ask all of you for your, just like a very brief uh, note on the, the importance of collaboration and the ideal collaboration. Each one of you represents, as we said in the beginning, a, a, a different field, but all of you are here and each one of you uh, represents a different aspect of what we need to accomplish together in order to change things. So let's start from the end. So Mr. Hazir, you. Would you give us a brief comment on the, the importance of collaboration and what you know the basics of a good collaboration are? Yeah, of course, it is uh, the climate change issues are very complicated and very complex. 
so, um, so, so we really need uh, to have as much, uh, let's say, stakeholders involved in order to achieve what, uh, what is best for the planet. We need all kinds of uh, specialties, all kinds of uh, experts, and at the end, uh, we need to realize, let's say, that sustainability is kind of a way of living. It's how we go to work and uh, how do we take from the grocery, what kind of vegetables do we buy from? Mr. Halinos, uh, what, is, what would your note be on that? Um, yes, um, along the same uh, reasoning, uh, I think I could just uh, build on my previous uh, intervention. Uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned, we have to move towards climate neutrality. It has to be at the local level. The problem is that uh, municipalities do not have the capacity and the know-how um, to manage an agenda like that. So uh, in order for us to move ahead, we need an integrated approach that brings in expertise that we need from the private sector and the academic sectors. We need uh, citizens to understand, uh, you know, what the role is to participate. In order to be engaged, they will need to be participate. They will need to participate. And we need also the private sector to invest and to assume uh, risk and, and raise capital. So in order for this to happen, we re the municipalities, of course, will have to sort of, let's say, lead. Ah, also, the municipalities will have to collaborate with other levels of government. I mean, it's not the municipality and these stakeholders I mentioned. It's also the regional authority, the responsible XYZ ministry. So only if all of us together, let's say, uh, in an integrated approach, collaborate, then we can see results that uh, we haven't been able to see to date, but we'll definitely need to see in the future if we are to, to make it. So we're talking about different building blocks and we need to add one to the other if we really want to make to have impact uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Zuros. Uh, I would like to agree, of course, we need networking. We need networks because through synergies, we can achieve better results. At the local level, the Natural History Museum of the Lesbos Petrified Forest has, uh, um, in collaboration with all the existing museums of Lesbos, we work together in order to, to help uh, museums that have not the uh, ability to, to act, to organize all together common, common uh, projects uh, dealing with uh, um, sustainability, for example, we collaborate with the Ephorate of Antiquities of Lesbos with the Archaeological Museum of Mytilene in order to uh, uh, create some activities in common, uh, putting together the natural environment and the cultural environment and speak about uh, the, the collaboration, the, the, uh, the relationship between uh, the nature as an inspiration for the people to create uh, culture to create monuments and all these uh, things. And of course, we collaborate on climate change issues. Our museum has a broad network of, of uh, collaboration with other natural history museums in uh, Greece, in Europe and all around the globe. Uh, and we, we are uh, the uh, managing uh, body for the recognition of Lesbos as a UNESCO Global Geopark in collaboration with 169 uh, monuments all around the globe. So this, this network is the driving force for um, doing activities, inspiring the ones from the good practice of the other and be more effective in our efforts towards climate change. Thank you. Towards climate change mitigation. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we, have a, we have a question from the audience uh, addressed to both Mr. Galinos and Mr. Hazigeorgiou. Both of you mentioned funding. And could you please share some examples of available funding sources for programs that combine environmental uh, awareness and culture? Uh, 
Uh, sure. I mean, in terms of European programs, programs I, I'm assuming we're, we are talking about. So the, let's say, easier uh, programs and organizations can apply for funding for are the so-called Erasmus Plus programs that are <clears throat> uh, programs that, that promote collaboration between different organizations and uh, with a aim to build uh, training materials and uh, educational content. So that's one way to go. Um, then there are programs that uh, <clears throat> uh, deal with um, spatial development. They have to do with uh, regional development or municipal co collaboration. They're so-called interreg programs. Um, of course, there are the research programs, which are huge programs and very complex and very difficult called the Horizon. Uh, and, and I think um, these are the, you know, the three types of programs that I could think of in terms of level of budgets and complexity, starting from Erasmus, ending to Horizon. Thank you. Mr. Hadzirio, would you like to add something to that? Yes, uh, it's as said from Mr. Galinos, there are uh, from time to time also the national programs for the energy upgrade, for example, of new museums or of, 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 let's say, public buildings in general. And um, also, uh, if, if uh, there is an idea for, for something bigger, like uh, said from Mr. Galinos with the Horizon programs or the um, cluster programs that uh, our project is uh, involved in, uh, then also there, there is a chance, and I think that uh, within the next years, more and more, uh, this kind of, uh, let's say, more complex uh, funding uh, um, will, be, uh, will be available uh, in order to, to, support, uh, to support museums or other, let's say, public uh, buildings to, uh, to deal with these issues. Alexis wanted to add something, you think? I just want to add something really quickly because, I mean, we all are aware of the EU programs and of course they're very useful and they provide funding, etc. cetera. But uh, we should increasingly start to think of the private sector as part of the, of the picture for funding. Uh, we have ESG, which is becoming uh, mainstream. Um, I mean, mostly for you know big, bigger the bigger companies, the bigger corporate private uh, uh, players. Uh, but these companies, in order to be able to attract capital and to some extent, um, not immediately, but in the future, survive, they're going to have to they're going to have to build up their, their societal and environmental agenda. So, and this money coming from the private sector is, you know, equally uh, interesting and much more uh, faster than, uh, you know, public funds and EU funds. And if I may add something to that, we should also, one should also consider other private sources such as philanthropy, because there are several uh, charitable institutions, both in Greece and in Europe, that are willing to, to support, to fund such projects, mostly on mostly small scale, like pilot projects. But sometimes being able to start a pilot and, and complete a pilot project is uh, you have like the, the something in hand that you can show in order to raise more money in the future. So this is, although we don't tend to think of philanthrop philanthropy as a source of funding, for myself who works on the philanthropy in, in that sector, this is also an obvious, uh, an obvious choice. So I think that we're, our panel should come to an end. Uh, we are, you know, we have another minute or so to go. And we touched upon issues such as uh, the need, our need to relearn and to revisit terms that are familiar, but may not be that familiar after all. Uh, we need to raise awareness and keep raising awareness. We need to collaborate, uh, review our exhibits and our products. We need to green our infrastructures and we need to change. And um, as all of you said, change uh, is not something that happens outside us, it's something that happens within us and something that starts sometimes from our own personal uh, behavior and uh, our everyday uh, conduct. So with all these notes, 
let us uh, say goodbye. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much, Sophia, uh, for inviting all of us and for bringing, shedding light on such an interesting topic and hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.